Hey YouTube, PJ here. This is Dog Pound 24-7. Thanks for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, please pop that subscribe and hit that like. Got a good old story for you about prison solitary confinement. Please don't go anywhere. Thanks for staying tuned, PJ here. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe and hit that like. Got a good old prison story about good old solitary confinement. Your boy did 15 months in the shoe. Indeed he did. I got popped with a cell phone and they smoked my boots. Let me tell you. Did all my shoe time in a Supermax and Upstate Correction Facility in a small town of Malone, New York. Upstate Correctional Facility. People, I'm going to break the solitary confinement down. I'm going to tell you the goods, the bads, and the uglies, okay? There's really no good, so let's get that out of the way. Start off by saying, when you get to the shoe, it is going to be one hell of a learning experience. Because people, just looking forward to it, you don't know what to expect if you haven't been there. But let me tell you, it will break you if you allow it. I will start with that. So you have to develop a routine when you're in the shoe, okay? If you don't, if you don't occupy your mind, you're going to go crazy, all right? I've seen it break some men in there. I've heard men going crazy in there. It will break you if you allow it. But you always have to tell yourself, no matter what your shoe time is, you got to always tell yourself this is eventually going to, this is only temporarily. That's what you got to keep telling yourself. All right, there's light at the end of the tunnel. That's the only way you're going to get through it. So like I said, I got 15 months in there. I arrived at Upstate Correction Facility. You will be housed with a bunkie there. Yes, you have a bunkie. That is good, and it can become bad. It all depends. It depends how you how you are as a person, what you can deal with, and what you're willing to deal with. It, it all comes down to that, people, because just picture this. Picture yourself in your bathroom locked in there that's what the shoe is a pretty good sized bathroom so about 8 by 12 or something I maybe a little bit bigger than that you have everything from your shower to your toilet to your sink in there you don't come out for wreck because you have your wreck pen door off the back of your cell when that pops you go out into this little cage it's about 4 by 8 and that's your little area to get some air you do not go outside. You do not leave yourself for anything. The only thing you're going to leave yourself for is a medical call out. If you're going to the infirmary, if you got a sick call, dental. And it's, listen, people, you're not leaving. Oh, visits, yes, or cell searches. Those are the only way you're coming out. And haircuts, if I did not mention it. But people, let me tell you, like I said, you got to occupy your mind. That's the only way you're going to get through it. And the other thing is, when it comes to having a bunkie, they're going to place you with a bunkie that is roughly, you know, they're going to they're gonna roughly be, you know, your size, your weight. You don't have to stress because they're not going to match you up with somebody that is, if you're 160 pounds soaking wet, they're not going to put a guy with you that's about 250, 260. That's not going to happen. They, they, they bunk you up by race and you know roughly your weight height and all that good stuff so that's how they do that um like i said whites whites um they don't bunk whites with blacks and they only bunk whites with spanish if they have to if they get in a jam spanish will bunk with blacks and vice versa um when it comes to eating in the shoe people you get fed three meals a day that's it and you're going to starve. I'm going to tell you right now, I starved in there. It, you know, people, when you get bored, you get hungry. I do at least. I don't know about you, but you starve in there. So you get bread three times a day, usually. Okay, so what you're going to start doing, you're going to start saving that bread, people. I started saving my bread. I'd save my butter, and I just then I would uh, uh, save the sugar packets. Because I would make bread and butter at night and throw some sugar on there. We used to call it a box donut. That's, and boy, it, you know, you're probably thinking, oh, gross. But it actually tastes pretty good. And you'll take whatever when you're hungry in there. Um, plus, you know, they don't give you enough food even when you get your meals, okay? 
they pretty much give you for breakfast a feed up tray you'll get rice krispies or something and it's like a cup they serve you little feed up trays all right they give you just enough cal calories where you're not going to starve to death that's pretty much how they feed you in there and uh it's horrible people you're going to be hungry um so when it comes to hygiene and all that other good stuff for taking care of your hygiene uh when it comes to showers if there's three levels when you're in the shoe okay there's one two and three you're gonna move up levels if you don't get any disciplinary reports if you don't you're not an issue you move up in levels okay if you move up beyond one you're gonna get a t uh extra shower a week you get some headphones so you can listen to the radio and you get an extra hour of rec during the day um like I said, you get the three showers. If you're level one, the first 30 days, you're getting three showers a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. And once you hit level two, you're going to get Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday. And that's for three, two, level three. Um, and listen, people, when you're in the shoe, you can't lollygag when you're in the shower, okay? Because the showers come on roughly 9 a.m., and the showers go off at about 9.20. And let me tell you, people, 9.20 is right on the dot you get 20 i don't even think it's that long i think it's about 15 minute showers maybe 10 i don't know it depends on what co is on and how big of a dick he wanted to be excuse my language all right they don't care if you're remember you got a bunkie so you gotta you gotta be in and out all right there's no enjoying it or nothing you scrub down rinse off wash it that's it you gotta i've we've had it happen one time i remember <laughs> me and my bunkie we had to rinse ourselves off in the sink afterwards because they cut the showers off yeah you only got a certain amount of time to wash your ass um so that's when it comes with the showers all right you pretty much the cell is this is how the, the um cell is set up all right you walk into your cell door you have a little flap that's where all your food comes through in the door and you, your mail whatever um, so just to the left of you, you got your cell, your uh, sink, your toilet. It's all one unit. And then along the wall, you're gonna have your desk, a two-seater desk. Um, and then underneath, you got cubby holes for your property. Um, then you have the shower in the corner. And then to the right of the shower, you're gonna have your rec pen door, which leads out into the little cage. It's about four by eight feet. And people, that's it. And then you have your bunks. Um, thing is two people when it comes to selling with somebody you want to respect the person you want to respect your bunkie because four out of the six uh bunkies that i had turned into confrontation it just happens i don't care if you're best friends when you go when you when you're in there um you guys are gonna fight it's you're walking on eggshells eventually because this, every little thing is going to irritate you that's going to happen um so best thing is when you're feeling it when you're getting that kind of mood what i used to do was i used to play my bunk i i so shit wouldn't pop off because then you, it just it's a nightmare then you gotta move again and if the police find out so i just played my bunk all day slept read it's pretty much all you can do anyway um vice versa man it just it's gonna happen you're in the box you're doing a long stretch in the box you're gonna end up fighting with your bunkie it's gonna happen uh, and then your best friends afterwards again, whatever the case may be. But you always want to keep your guard up too, man. You got you don't know who you're bunking with. It's an uncomfortable feeling if you you know it's you always gotta be aware. Um, but that's it, man. That's what that's what the shoe's about. You come out once a month, you get a haircut, and that takes two minutes. They're just buzzing you. You don't get your fades, you don't get your tapers, anything like that. It's v -v 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 they're buzzing you, and that's it. You go back in. Um, that's pretty much it, man, when it comes to the shoe. Like I said, you get headphones. Let me cover that real quick. The headphones that you get are pretty much like dollar store headphones. They're very, very cheap, and they like to short out, and you want to try to keep them as good as possible because it's almost a nightmare to get another pair from these cops. So what, you, what I used to do with the headphones is they used to take the tape off the deodorants and whatever you can get stuff that's sticky. I used to tape the wires so it would give a little bit more support where they wouldn't short out. Um, but yeah, you get your headphones. Um, there's three holes and then there's wall jacks. There's three holes. One hole would be all music. It changes music every four hours, the different types of music. They play anything from rap, rock, classic, reggae, um, all that good stuff. They play Spanish music, 
Mexican music. They play it all. Um, and then on two hole, they have straight news. Okay, it's just news radio. They talk about all the news, what's going on in the world. And on three hole or the third hole, it's straight sports, which that's pretty much what I played. I listen to sports all day. They play sports center, ESPN radio, and then on Saturdays and Sundays, college football. Sunday NFL. I stayed on. Listen, I said, if I didn't have that, people, I'd go insane. Um, stayed with that. Um, that's it, people. That's pretty much the shoe. I mean, what I pretty much did was to kill my time as I cheat the system. I would sleep as much as possible. I would just try to sleep, 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 and read, read, read. I could, I'd probably kill a book in two days. I was killing books. I probably read over 300 books when I was there in 15 months. I was killing books. I mean, some books you get right in, it's like a movie to me. That's what books were to me when I was in there. I, it'd be like a movie. I'm watching a movie. That's how I, that's how it would be. It's, you know, I've read some, read some pretty good books in there. And, Listen, to survive in there, you can't, I mean, New York State prisons, you can smoke cigarettes, but when you're in the shoe, you can't smoke, but you can make moves to get tobacco from the porters, and um, there's ways around that, I'm not going to get into how, the, how that happens, I'm not, you know, putting that out there, um, but you get tobacco in there, um, they charge you, it's called a jump shot, what they do is they take tobacco and put it in a sugar packet, it's called a jump shot, and it's probably anywhere from 5 to 10 stamps, um, food, people barter, barter their food for it, um, you get weed, you can get anything, anything up there you want, I mean, you get it all in the box still, I ain't gonna lie, people, I stayed smoking weed when I was there, because when I was doing box time, I was maxing out on my sentence, they couldn't give me, if I got a dirty urine, they couldn't give me any more time, they couldn't do nothing to me, I was maxing out in the box, I went home from there, so I didn't care, I smoked, and the best part about it was, is I had I was in a work release program before that, and that's where I got my popped with the cell phone. So I saved a ton of money when I was in the street working, and what what a what a shell shock that was going from work release in the street straight to the shoe. <laughs> that was a shell shock. Um, but like I said, I went there with a lot of money. So every time somebody touched down, I was sending out money. I was getting all the weed I can, people, because that's pretty much how I stay sane. No, I do not smoke weed no more. I done with that. I moved on from that, but I kept kept my sanity, people. But you can pretty much get anything like that in the box. Whatever your poison is, it's there. Um, but that's it, people. That's the shoe. That is what happens in the shoe. Nothing much going on. But my best advice for you is please just try not to go because it will break you. If, if you can't deal with... Um, small areas for a long period of time the shoe is not for you and they these people do not give a shit if you're claustrophobic they don't give a shit if you've got anxiety they don't care about none of that shit man so think twice if you have to go do time think about the shoe or if you're even watching this from inside the prison walls right now and you haven't been there keep your fucking nose clean because man if you ain't with that shit it will break you let me tell you. But people, I'm going to close with that. And I hope everybody enjoyed the video. Please hit that like button. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I'm going to hit you back with another video on what fishing is when you're in prison. Yes, people, you can go fishing in prison. I will break that down in the next video. It's like kind of like a part two to this video because it, it you know, it, you do it a lot while you're in the shoe. So with that, I'm going to close. People, everybody have a good rest of their night, day, whatever it is. When you're watching this, stay free, safe, and stay corona-free. Yeah!